Welcome to our lecture online. We're now going to take a close look at F equals ma as it relates to the forces between the planet and the sun or the planet and any star and know how it affects the motion of the planet. Now there's actually two accelerations we need to take into account and just let's see where those come from. So first of all we need to realize that the position vector r between the star and the planet depend upon two variables, both r and theta. There's two variables that are associated with that position vector and because of that we need to take a look at f equals ma again. So we take the gravitational force which is equal to the mass of the planet times the rate of change, the second derivative with respect to time of the position vector. But notice that if we write it in vector format we get f sub g of course being in the opposite direction as m times a, the, the uh, acceleration as a vector quantity which can also be written as the second derivative with respect to time of the position vector. But now when we take the magnitude of that, so we're going to write it again as minus g m m over r squared which is the familiar format if we're only talking about the magnitude. But notice that the magnitude of the force between the planet and the star will result in two accelerations, the radial acceleration m times a and the centripetal acceleration. Notice the centripetal acceleration is always going to be in the same direction as the force of gravity. That's why they both have a negative sign so they're in the same direction but the radial direction will be in the opposite direction because it's using the position vector going in that direction so that's why we get the negative sign relative to the gravitational force. Now the radial acceleration can still be expressed as the magnitude of r, the second derivative of the magnitude of r with respect to time. So we end up with the gravitational force, the negative gravitational force equals ma in terms of the radial direction and we have minus m times v squared over r because the centripetal acceleration is v squared over r. Remember that v is equal to omega the angular velocity times the radius of that orbit and then if we replace v squared by omega squared r squared we end up with m omega squared r where omega can be defined as the first derivative with respect to time of the angle theta. And so we can then write this as the second derivative with respect to time of theta and so the whole equation now becomes the gravitational force pulling the planet towards the star is equal to m times a in the radial direction minus m times the second derivative with respect to time of the angle times r which represents the centripetal acceleration. And so this is what we call the radial equation of motion that means that there's going to be a change in the acceleration towards the, between on the line between the planet and the star and there's going to be an acceleration around the orbit as it goes faster, as it goes closer to the sun and slower as it goes farther away from the sun and we'll see how that works when we talk about Kepler's laws. But at least this gives us the concept of the radial equation of motion between a planet and a star and that is how it's done.